Katie Coleman is with us, an astronaut. And Katie, you were telling me before the broadcast, this was unlike anything you've seen because astronauts could not get this close to their families just before launch. Well, it's, it's great to see that this is a tradition that is really changing. And it used to be back in the shuttle program, you would actually say goodbye to your kids under 16, you know, a week ahead of time. And the time, last time you see them is the day before, waving across a big giant dick, ditch at the Kennedy Space Center. And so it's, it's pretty neat to realize that, you know, they're, they're going to space and they get to say goodbye to their kids right then and there and almost take them with them. And you've talked about how launching is the most dangerous thing you do, but it's also the most thrilling. Try to convey the magic of this moment for us. I think as, as regular human beings, it's hard to believe that you could actually wake up in the morning, put on your long underwear under your spacesuit, a spacesuit, walk out through that same doorway that we just saw Doug and, and Bob stop in, and, and then be on your way to a launch pad, strap into a rocket, and be on your way to space. It just doesn't seem like something that would happen to real people. And I think most of us feel that way too. And yet that this day hopefully is gonna end in a very different way and they will be on their way to space. And Katie, so much of this is so new to all of us. You know, we see them there and, and, and they're sort of buckling into the Tesla before they take off to the rocket. And we also notice an incredible moment once they, they shut the doors of that Tesla, because as we mentioned earlier, both these astronauts, Doug and Bob, are married to other astronauts as well. And, and they're able to talk to their two sons. They have two young sons, and they're old enough, you were telling me, to sort of understand the magnitude of this moment. We saw those virtual hugs, and then now they sort of walk around there. You have Megan MacArthur and Karen Nimberg, uh, who's a retired astronaut. W what do you think is going through the minds of those wives right now in their heads? Yeah. Wait. Well, I, I'll say I think it's generous of them to share this moment with us. I mean, it's a, it's a private moment, and yet they're generous enough to let us see, too. And, and it makes us all realize that these are real people that are going. And, you know, I heard that sentiment talked about through people from NASA, people from SpaceX. It wasn't about, you know, this demo to launch. It was we're sending Bob and Doug into space, and Bob and Doug have families. And you were part of the early integration of SpaceX and NASA, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, but what is it like, and NASA is so polished, it's a by the book agency, you know, you guys never want to make mistakes, and then you have sort of the rebel, the maverick, and Elon Musk. I think it's, I mean, it's, I think it's awesome for both sides in that, you know, with, with NASA, we have a responsibility. I, I'm, I retired a couple of years ago, but you always have that responsibility to the taxpayers to really be the right shepherd of all those tax dollars, and you are responsible, and yet, you know, SpaceX would have these, these ideas that we didn't have. And in those early days, it was just interesting to see people that did things differently. And at the same time, once you got them together, you realized they had the same goals. And it's the people that make that work. And I'm just curious, as you look at this video, it feels to me that it may be a little bit of the Flintstones versus the Jetsons. <laughs> and certainly, you know, the dangers have changed so much, uh, or the dangers are still the same, but the aesthetics seem to have changed. Well, I like it that it makes it more approachable. I mean, it makes it more fun, interesting to, I mean, it's something I'm always thinking about, you know, what can somebody who's 19, I have a 19 year old, you know, what can they relate to? And I think that, you know, America is reacting to this, you know, we're doing things differently and it makes them think, well, where are they going to go now? And we're all going. We have seen certain things today, certain moments so far that are very un-NASA like, not in a bad way, but I'm saying tra no breaking, taken. <laughs> breaking, breaking tradition, maybe in a good way. And, and one of those moments for both of us, Katie, was watching those families around the Tesla sort of do those virtual hugs. And for a viewer, for somebody who, who's not as invested in the space program as you as an American, I can watch that and say, that's pretty cool, that's pretty amazing, that's something new that's gonna keep us interested and sort of show the human connection with the astronauts and Americans. Well, I think that with, with both these companies, I mean, there, there's, there's SpaceX, there's NASA, we also have other commercial partners, and I, I liken it to having a wedding. Okay, where you have the family of the groom and the family of the bride. And, you know, they, they all have the same goal, which is exploration or get their kids married. But then, you know, each of them do different, you know, have different traditions that the other ones would never think of. And it's that process of getting that together and making it happen. And it seems like it's worked out pretty well for this space family. And I, I'm curious, so Michael Griffin, who's an aerospace uh, veteran, he said at some point the rocket industry needs a Henry Ford and maybe Elon will be that guy. When we talk about Elon and kind of this billionaire's club, uh, as there's a, a race for, for space at this point, would you say that space should be a, for people who just have experience? Or do you like the idea of this, this tourism, this space tourism? I think the more people, the better. 
Mm. I mean, more people, more more ideas. I mean, who would have thought of putting their their small red car on the top of a rocket on its way to Mars, <laughs> right? And and you know, NASA wouldn't have been able to because of our responsibilities to the taxpayers. And yet, who you know, a lot more people know about this. And so, having people that think differently, that's really the way we're going to get to Mars. Katie, I want to bring you back in just to give us a sense of what's about to happen with the launch director. There's going to be a poll of go or no go. How does that get decided? So they're they're basically looking at the whether it's a go for launch poll, but the first stage of that is go for fueling. And this is an unusual kind of launch in that usually that rocket is fueled before the crew gets there because fueling itself is a very dangerous operation. And yet between SpaceX and NASA, they have figured out ways to make that process safe enough that everybody is is up for the idea of it. And yet when it comes to a day where are we going to launch or not, you don't want to do something like that if you're not, if you already know you're not going to launch. So what they're doing is uh, at 348, we should know whether they're go for fueling or not. Katie, talk to us about what's Correct. happening right now. So they're basically getting the whole team on one page. Everybody knows everything they just said, but they're saying it again. So everybody's listening. Everybody knows we're about to enter a new phase. And we are, and we're going to make sure that, and these are the new procedures we follow, which are very prescribed. And you know, you don't bring up small things; it's only big things. And this is what's going to happen. We're all going to do together. Now, when you say everyone's being polled here or asked, are we talking about SpaceX, NASA, uh, Kennedy Space Center? Yes. Are we Johnson? We're talking about everybody. Everybody, but also things like we say the range. The range is like the basically the physical tableau of you know the seas out in the range. Is there boats out there? Are there planes in the area that shouldn't be? There's all sorts of details, and they're each managed by one area. So they're pulling the weather, and, I and, and they're doing it electronically, actually. I wanted to just go back to you talked about how dangerous it is to fuel the rocket uh, after you have the crew on board. What's the advantage to doing it like that? Well, I'd say it's dangerous whenever you do it. It's just that when you've got the crew on board, you try not to do that. But the advantage is that you can fuel until the last minute. That fuel is really cold, but it's so it's always boiling off, and you can actually have more fuel in that rocket when it lifts off. Otherwise, you fuel ahead. Some of that's burned off. You had to have sort of more rocket to take care of it. So you've got really the maximum amount of fuel before you lift off. So, Katie, walk us through that, the, the abort system. This is obviously if something goes wrong or if the, the launch doesn't happen at all. Correct. And so if they have an, if they, that, they want to make sure it's yeah, armed for fueling, which is a dangerous... Uh, operation. It, it, it's something that basically they can pull that capsule off that it actually shoots itself off the top of that rocket and we can save the crew anywhere along the path really of ascent all the way across the ocean. You have experienced it, unfortunately, I guess, on your first mission, what was it, seven scrubbed uh, attempts in the first 30 days, is that right? It, it kind of give us a sense of, you know, you're all prepared and amped and excited for this moment and then the letdown of the weather isn't going to cooperate. You know, I think there's part of a real person that just thinks, how could a real person really go and do this? And when this happens sort of again and again, you just think, well, maybe real people don't get to go. And yet, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you put on that suit and you walk out, you just can't help but be ready. And, uh, you know, when the day is right, you went. Um, I do have members of my family that still haven't forgiven me. They're all texting, actually, as we speak. You know, because, uh, you know, they just, my mom's like, when is it going to go? I'm like, mom, I don't know. She's like, I'm your mother. You can tell me. <laughs> You know, we are, we are hearing about the weather trending in the right direction. At least that's what, what we've been told. Uh, we'll, we'll see exactly what happens because it is changing moment by moment. But I do want to ask you and Christina both, uh, since we have about 40 minutes before we're going to see this, um, what, what, is, what is going on in the minds? I mean, are you, are, are you able to talk to your fellow astronauts as you're sitting there in the, for you, the space shuttle or, or in this case, the capsule? Are, are you praying if you're religious? I know there's a lot of things you have to check through uh, before liftoff, but what, what's happening right now? Well, in my last shuttle launch, we were launching the Chandra X-ray Observatory, and in between, I mean, there's the comm checks, and then there's a really long time, in this case, like two hours, where you're laying on your back, and there's really not that much to do, but have all the systems be checked, and I took a nap. You fell asleep before a launch? I mean, on purpose. I mean, I had, like, a really big day to launch, you know, a $1.8 billion telescope, so... I'm, I'm efficient. <laughs> Katie, you have uh, likened this before to a very, very, very risky taxi ride. And so <laughs> while the risks have certainly uh, decreased um, in time, especially now with these new uh, space shuttles, I'm just curious, spaceships, I'm just curious if fear plays at all, especially that image of, of Doug's 10-year-old son. And we may have a picture that he drew of the, the crew dragon. But just from, and he said as they were driving away, you know, love you. And I'm just trying to imagine Imagine you have a son as well as, as Bob and Doug, that moment and the fear and just the potential uh, 
for something to potentially go wrong. And I think we have the picture uh, there that is that is sundry. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You know, I think you, you make your, well, I, might, I, mean, I can only speak for myself, but I think it's true for many people. Um, you make your decision about whether you want to be on the top of that rocket years before you're ever there. And so you're where you've trained to be. And, you know, we decided this is what mo Jamie's mom did, you know, so to speak. And I think you, you know, you're there, you're doing your job, you're not thinking about making history, any of those things. You're just there really making sure that everything is working right. I have to say, you know, it's a relief when these critical phases of flight, you know, launch and landing um, are finished. And my, my husband sent me a photo of um, our, I, I flew on the Soyuz as well, and it's our, our little guy in his little Russian hat in December in Baikonur, you know, saluting on that little square. And, of course, you know, I cried up on that space station. And we have some breaking news, if you will. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine telling President Trump we are a go for launch right now. So, guys, wh when do the astronauts, when, when do they find out, Doug and Bob, that they are definitely a go? They, right from the get-go, they know this, the first ones that find out? Well, you know, they hear those polls. They're those same polls that we were listening to, they, they hear those things. So they're hearing at the same time um, that we are. But they, I was just listening to a conversation about, you know, basically lightning, the energy of lightning, the energy in the air. They're looking at that, you know, being within limits or not. They're going to reevaluate it at about 413. And, and they told that to the, to the crew. Katie, so that was the moment right there that they aborted the mission there. Of course, uh, this has been a moment nine years in the making. Katie Coleman is an astronaut who joins us now. We've been talking for several hours on ABC News Live and National Geographic just before this launch. We, we sort of saw this coming. The, the weather was so bad. We had heard from the NASA administrator who talked to the president, who at one point said, it's a go right now. But they sort of looked at the weather and walk us through sort of that decision making, because it's a poll taken by all of the parties involved. So when they made the poll, the weather was actually con complying. It was good enough, right? And they also saw it going in, this, in, a, in a good trend that it was going to stay good. And yet it did not. And, and just to, I was listening to some of the chatter afterwards and after they said, you know, if we'd had another 10 minutes, we maybe could have gone. It's not that it was just all preordained. It's, it's the Florida coastline. It's the afternoon, you know, in May. It's just uh, it's tough to launch. And and uh, as uh, Gino said, we're, we're going up to the space station. We have to meet it at a certain point. There's only really exactly enough fuel to get there. And so we have to go at just the right time. We can't start late and still catch it. Give us a sense of the disappointment as an astronaut. You've been in their shoes before your first mission aborted seven times in 30 days. And in three times on my second launch. Um, <laughs> and so, you know this drill. but you know, it, it's, um, it's, it's hard on the families. And in this case, it's a little bit different where people couldn't come to the launch. But I mean, I've had hundreds of friends and family down there in Florida, of hotel rooms and rental cars and vacation time. And, and yet the astronauts know they're going to go. It's just a quick, I mean, it, it means not right now. It means we're going to go when the time is right. The next window is on Saturday. So it's actually fine. It's, it's not as hard on the crew as it is on the families and the friends and and everybody's been looking forward to it. But space flight happens when it's supposed to. You know